Greetings sports fans, welcome back to Edivision, the channel where we look at sports differently. Today we'll be looking at the business of sports and I have a very special guest with me today, Miss Carol Beckford. Carol, how are you doing? I'm good enough, thanks for having me, Eddie. Okay, no problem. And as we know, you have 32 years of experience as it relates to journalism. Um, you're a strategic marketing specialist and also an, an author. You wear a lot of hats, but could you tell the viewers who is Carol Beckford? Well, I mean, I'm a teacher, first of all. Um, I went to the Michael College and I, am a, I, I still teach. I, I don't do it formally in the classroom anymore. I'm a trained physical education and science teacher. That was my training before I even studied broadcasting and journalism. And so I've collated and collected a significant portion of work in the sport industry, on the field, off the field, um, and in the boardroom, essentially. So I've gone from coaching, teaching, PE in the sun with girls and boys, and you know, coaching in the Bahamas, came back, taught at Merle Grove, and so on, and did a few good years on the field. Um, Played a little sport myself, even got a scholarship because of it. But essentially, over the last couple of years, I've just really focused on management and marketing, you know, to try to help others. And now I'm in the part of my life where I am ensuring that the next generation is prepared to take on what I think is going to be a massive explosion in sports, not just in Jamaica, but in the Caribbean. Um, maybe this is a tough one, but what is your true passion? What aspect? Teaching, teaching? You know, I love teaching. Teaching, yeah, man. Yes. Yeah, I come from a family of teachers, um, and I grew up having that kind of guidance around me, instructional, but flexible. So I find it easy to have a conversation and provide guidelines and so on. So even even if I'm out there marketing and selling and doing whatever i use my teaching everything i do i use my teaching training as the guide and the principle in which how i impart information and share information and and teaching helps me to learn so when i teach i learn a lot so while i have the content i also learn a lot from the people who i share information with yeah people always say you know the, the music business but Let's touch on the business of sports. What would you say is the business of sports? What does it entail? Well, it's really how to create, put an economic model to how business, the sport can afford to look after itself. So back in the day, we, we relied a lot on talent, right? You know, you, you made a team because you could score a goal. You made a team because you could keep. You made us because you could score goals. You know, um, you can run fast and so on. No, you you are making a team because yes, you you can play, but you also have what is called brand brand equity, meaning you can partner with business people for their increase in business, but also your reach as 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 a star or as an athlete. And so that's what the business of sport is. It's a combination of things on and off the field for exploitation and exploration of earnings. Um, we in Jamaica, and I like to talk about the Caribbean because I think one of the things that we make, you know, Jamaica is a leader in a number of things and sports in the Caribbean. But we have to consider that our population relatively is small when we look at the sections of the world and when research is being done for example they put us in caribbean and latin america so although we're outstanding in a number of areas we're still i think just six percent of the of the world's population so that in itself tells you so we're batting above our weight class one but we're making a global impact and and so it is important for us to be able to continue to carve out that that niche and you know and really just get cracking but there's a lot of money you know the sport global figures 
is just under 700 billion US dollars now. And there are lots more things you can earn from. And I think Jamaica is at a critical point to really do more of what is required. So um, do you think our Jamaican sportsmen and sportswomen are benefiting enough? Enough is relative. I think a lot of them are. But I think there are some things that we need to do as a country to facilitate them getting more. You know, it's funny. <laughs> I've, for the last couple of weeks, I've been talking to some young people. Because one of the things, I learned a lot from the older folks. I was guided. I was steered in the right direction. I learned a lot. And I can call names. The late Freddie Green, the late Grover Campbell, uh, Yvonne Kong, who was the principal at GC Foster. She taught me at Michael. Vilma Charlton is still very active. Vilma McDonald. I mean, I learn from a lot of people. And I think I am, I am bridging the gap. So I'm still there, very technologically savvy in terms of, you know, having access to information and so. But I just believe that there's so much more we can do. And so, you know, talent is one thing, reach is the other. But there are collaborations. We, we don't collaborate well. Um, and I think that we're missing the boat. Um, when I had the pleasure of working with Usain, he had amongst the Gatorade branded athletes, some international people to include NBA and Serena at the time. And Gatorade used storytelling to put them in ads together. Now, when you look today, I mean, you're just an a Instagram post away from your star. So it's not like then we used to have to travel to Florida to shoot a commercial and so on. You know, so it's, it's different. So even although you're saying he's just retired, I mean, or just over six years, the athletes now have way more access to the things, but it requires a strategy. And I think Jamaica is at a point now where it needs to, we need better infrastructure for sure. We need stronger leadership or more strategic leadership. We need to get our governance structures in place. And we need to find ways to partner with international global people that can earn significantly. You know, we, we should have we should have a manufacturing plan for gear. Even if we're making the sleeves, there are so many things we can do. And I, you know, I think you know, when you look at the programs overall to set it up in such a way that the country can benefit or people invest in it can benefit. And I think that's the approach that I'd want to take towards that. Good stuff. And you mentioned earlier, you work with saying You were his publicist, right? Yeah, I was his publicist between 2009 and 2013. For four very good years of my my mm -hmm. professional career mm -hmm. i mean it was hard it was good it was interesting but it was fun i don't know if you can figure that out it was really hard work because i understand I mean, what they say yeah <laughs> but it was good and i had a really good time the experience was really really valuable and i i appreciate it i still get calls every now and again um because, you know, once you're associated with somebody like that, you know, these things will happen. But it was really, it was an opportunity for me to showcase not just his saying, but brand Jamaica. And he epitomized everything about Jamaica. Excellence, reliability, exactly. you know, that bold kind of a thing. So it was, it was really fun, you know. How, is it, how important is it for our athletes and you know footballers to have a publicist well it's important for them to have a team mm. so after you deal with the attorney who going to look at your contracts after you deal with your accountants who going to make sure that you don't go to prison you have to pay your taxes because you're earning all right <laughs> then you have your support so outside the technical people because you must have that so you're going to have your coach your man you know your coach your strength and conditioning, your massage therapist, your nutritionist. You need to have a marketing team. And now, you know, when I look back now, 2009, I was essentially just doing, you know, media, press, 
social media was there, but it wasn't as it wasn't as impacting as as now. I mean, you almost had to have a now have a a digital rep in your team outside of media, right? And I I mean, I did everything pretty much. When I say everything, along that line, um, you know, take the pictures, do the short videos. And when I think, I'm looking back now and I'm saying to myself, those videos, it, we were posting commercials and doing behind the scenes. Now, when you look at how even Instagram works, so you have a reel that you can go, oh, what, it's 90 seconds? And then you have, I mean, when you, when you break it down, you really need one person. And let me tell you, I see a lot of companies asking for social media people and then want you with 30 skills. No, it is specific. So you can't employ me if you do digital and then you want me to be graphic, your graphic artist. That don't work. That don't work. You understand? So it, it has evolved. In, in, in a full decade, a lot has changed, right? It doesn't preclude you from still putting out the facts, but you have so many more platforms. And you can't run. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot afford for your credibility to go down. You still have to give the facts. And that's that's important, you know. As it relates to your, your marketing skills, who are some of the persons or companies that you have worked with? I mean, locally in Jamaica, I've worked with the Ministry of Tourism and its agencies. At the time it was tourism and sports. I would have had JTV, TPD um we had a, oh dear, I don't remember, Jam Va Jamaica Vacations. And then I moved up to Jampro. Now, Jampro was the ultimate. Like, Jampro is investment and export. But it was an important time for the brand. We were handling Brand Jamaica, or Jampro had it as a responsibility. So we worked with the JEA, the JMA. They were separate at the time. And we worked with a guy called Simon Anholt, who is a brand expert. You know, we did the business club for, for cricket when we hosted the World Cup in the Caribbean. So those are two good organizations. Of course, Cricket West Indies. So the three organizations I worked with that would help me on the marketing side. And on the PR side, GIS, I was head of PR for the Jamaica Information Service. And of course, Mr. Bolt, I mean, if there was ever a subject that, you know, Anybody, when you live in this world, you either want to work for somebody like you say, LeBron, Michael Jordan, Serena, and I got access to, as a matter of fact, to all of those. Yes, man. Yes, <laughs> man. Yes. Yeah, man. <laughs> Can't anything else. Yeah, so, yeah, it's been a good run. And I mean, right now, I'm put, I've put some of that information in, in books. Um, I have three books out. I'm thinking of what, what to write about next in terms of a book form. I have a blog. I have maintained it too much. But, you know, there's so much work to do. I'm, I'm doing strategic work. I'm connecting people. I'm doing stuff with some young people out of the region. I still maintain relationships with GC Foster and UTEC. Because that's where I taught for a significant portion of, of the adult learning. And so all of my students you know, still keep in touch with me, believe it or not. And that's sports. That don't include the HR from mm -hmm. UCC and IMP that I did. So, you know, it's, and it's really been a good, a, a good challenge for me. And every time they call you and say, Miss, can you help with this? Or can you steer me? It, I learn a lot from it too. So although I'm the expert and they're talking to me to get help, it is still an opportunity for me to learn, you know? All right. Um, Carol, I want you to give some, give us some pro bono work as it relates to the JFF. Over the years, we've seen the development, so to speak, of the JFF. Um, went through a lot of tough times. Some will say they are still going through tough times. Um, a lot of gaps. Persons can identify a lot of gaps in terms of how they go about doing their business. If you were to give any free advice to the JFF. What would you tell them? Go back to basics. Go back to basics. Track and field has that model and it has worked. Um, from prep school right up, you're, you're competing in, 
in things that would make you good at what you want to do. So have have competitions, have them in the regions. We have the models. I don't know why we're not making them work. Create create policies that will guide you into making the right decisions. So go back to basics. Um, demonstrate how, how football can be used as a tool for national development. Um, we have partnerships with countries that are football powers. Get technical assistance, get equipment and supplies. One of the things, but those things are expensive. And I know we can't buy, would I like to sit 20,000, 30,000 football just being distributed into schools and have every single primary prep high school, girls and boys just playing football. You know, you drive around the country you now, people playing basketball, they gone back playing a little more cricket. Um, you see, the children are running. You don't see them playing football. So we need to have a revolution of that. And if, if that is the basic advice. The reason why I'm being so cursory to because um, I think I, I, I have some responsibility to do some work. And I don't, I don't want to say too much because it would mean that I'm giving away the secret. But <laughs> mm. um, uh. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, mm. man, go back to basics and just for it for anything because that's how the word going to spread. We have the communities, people live in the communities, talk to statin, know where the people live, know what age group they are. Let me tell you, we have information that we don't use to our benefit. I mean, now the census thing is going on, right? And in another year or so, we'll be able to collect the information. But of the 2.89 million people that still live in Jamaica, we have a voters list. We know where the people live. We know how old the people are. We know what the centers, what the commercial centers are. We know where money. We know who have the most supermarket. I mean, and I'm saying it and I'm saying to myself, why doesn't somebody sit down and say, all right, we're going to move into, into Hopewell, Hanover, because they are, the average age of that place is X, Y, Z. That's where we can find young men and women who are clearly idle and not have nothing to do. We look at champs, who winning the medals, right? Where they come from. And, and so we're not accessing, we're not doing the things that can make us, make us proud of what we are and what we want to achieve. And so that is my issue. So we need planners. I, I wrote us a blog some time ago about the expansion of the role of the SDF. We need a super agency in sports because we have the material and this breaking up. So yes, in sport can be a division. SDC can be a division. SDF need to just run sport in Jamaica. I mean, I can't say it another way. I can't soften it up. I can't see it up. That's what we need. Okay, Carol, when I was doing my research, I noticed that you were top 100 in terms of Twitter experts. Were you aware of this? That was a long time ago. I, I don't think I, I don't think I do that anymore. Oh. I don't think I'm listed anymore. <laughs> oh, but you were, but what was that What was um, that feeling? First of all, I didn't know I was being ranked. I, I, hmm. I do prefer Twitter as a social media space. Yeah. And I tweet, I tweet a lot. Oh my God, I, some days I feel like I'm pounding on people, but, but I, and I tweet facts. I stick to the facts. And so no matter how people feel about their opinions, if it's not factual, me not take them on. And so I've become this, you know, go-to person essentially. And I go to conferences. I invest my time. So I follow the right people. I tag people sometimes. Um, and I think that's, you know, like how they have the charts of how you become this. I think I have done the right things. I follow the right sports, follow the right people. And I tweet about the things that people are afraid to talk about. So I guess, I guess probably that's it. But I haven't seen any ranking in a long time. But that was, a, that was 10 years ago, Eddie. <laughs> that's a long time. I didn't know it was so long ago. Mm -hmm. But Carol... The big question, can the regular boys win the World Cup? Um, they can, they can compete. I, I, I don't think, um, I need to spend a little more time. I know on paper in the last, in the last World Cup qualifier, we had some good players. I know a little bit has changed, but football can, 
football has the widest representation globally than we have ever had before. In other words, we have more international, we have more Jamaicans in international clubs and circles than we have ever had. So it means that we need somebody who can put this talent together. I wouldn't want to commit myself to saying, yes, we can win, but we will compete. I, I hope with the expansion of what CONCACAF is about, we can actually go to the World Cup because it's going to be next door. It's literally up the road, you know, and the girls mm -hmm. have gone once and they're returning this year and the guys have not gone since 1998. We, we, all the other countries that please, we have... Please don't remind me, Carol. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah, man, I, I, I have to look more of, about it um, in terms of, you know, what, what the team will look like, you know, or a goalkeeper, our main goalkeeper is doing very well, and himself and Damon are in the same club now, and we have a host of other people. You know, I spoke to the West Indies cricket president in an interview, and he said the gap between the 19 and 23 so after it's essentially after you finish playing Manning and the Costa Cup and club, what's done? We have always had an issue with that age group, even in track and field, um, even in the sports that we do well at. And if we can bridge that gap, and what it says to me is that a collegiate system of sorts or a club championship, we don't have enough collegiate, we don't have enough interest in athletes who want to go to college in Jamaica to force a collegiate system that produces top-notch athletes. So let us be honest, but we need to facilitate club, a club development or a under-23 program that engages those people who have left high school and put them in a program, which essentially I'm saying we need a sports academy. Yeah. I totally agree. Um, I think we can leave it here. I want to thank Carol Beckford for joining me. It was a great discussion. But Carol, um, how can the people find you? Give, give them your socials and so on, and the name of your books and all of that. Oh, well, if you come on my Twitter, everything is Carol Beckford, C-A-R-O-L-E. If you leave off the E, you're not going to find me. It says Carol Beckford, C-A-R-O-L-E, Beckford. So I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, and I have a blog, Carol Beckford, WordPress. I don't do TikTok. <laughs> um, but you can find me there. The book, the first one was Keeping Jamaica Sport on Track. That needs to be republished. The second one, Jamaica is in Sport and Tourism. They're all online. And the third one, which I co-wrote with Dr. Olivia Rose, is ABCs of Caribbean Sport, Marketing and Psychology. That's on Amazon. So you can find me. Just once you Google me, it takes you to everywhere that's and everything that I do. So should shouldn't be hard to find. All right, folks. That was Carol Beckford. I'm Eddie Bruna. Thanks for watching. Always remember, like, share, and subscribe.